Hello and welcome from the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. We just discovered who has received the 2008 Swedish Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel. With me to discuss this year's prize is Peter Ungland, Secretary for the Economics Prize Committee. Professor Ungland, thanks very much for agreeing to talk so soon after the announcement has been made. Can we begin by you telling us who has received this year's Prize in Economic Sciences? Uh, it was received by Paul Krugman, who is professor at Princeton University uh, in the United States. And uh, he, he received it for his contribution to trade theory and economic geography. Yes. And so th there's t two subjects there which are involved with glo global trade. Could you, could you go into them in a bit more detail, please? Sorry, no. could, could you go into to both the, 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 the trade theory and the geography yes, in more so detail? Yes, so, so it all started with contributions to tra trade theory in the late 1970s. And traditional trade theory, which goes back to the work by the Swedes, Geli Heckscher and Bertil Lulin, explains why countries trade with each other because they're different. They have different factor proportions, as the, as the theory says, so different uh, endowments of capital and labor. And that theory uh, is well equipped to explain why poor countries export agricultural products to rich countries who in turn will, would sell industrial products, cars and, cars and so on. But if you look closely at trade patterns, it turns out that most of world trade is between, between the industrial countries, countries that similar with similar levels of technology, with similar access to capital and labor. And they exchange more or less similar goods with each other. Yes. And the contribution of Paul Krugman was to help understand why that is so. And his, in short, his answer is the combination of increasing returns to scale, so it, it, uh, it becomes cheaper to produce goods in large series, and the fact that consumers value variety. So you want Levi's jeans, and I prefer Calvin Klein, yes. for instance. Uh, and he, Based on that, he managed to produce a theory that explains world trade much better. And so this, this was a theory that, that was explaining the evolving trade between countries. What, what was it that was causing the shift in, in trade? What were the factors involved? Uh, and, when, and when was this occurring? Well, well one important factor was, was uh, the reduction of transport costs, which also is something that Krugman brought into trade theory that, that uh, wasn't, wasn't present or, or wasn't at center stage before. Uh, with transport costs, uh, the, the home market matters. So if you have a large home market, you can produce larger series, and that makes you more competitive on, uh, on the world market. And so the, and the part of this theory was the, the, this, what we call the, the new, ge new economic geography, which, which partially explains why uh, there's been this, this migration into cities. Could yeah. you explain more yeah, about yeah, that, yeah, please? Right. right. So if, if, if you think, think of it, if you have a, have a large... Uh, home market that allows you to be produce larger series and to, to sell the goods at lower prices. But that makes, that makes a, a market with a large population more attractive because, because living standards are higher there. So that, that in short explains why there, there tends to be migration to, towards the large cities. And based on that Krugman developed a theory of the interplay between, uh, between the agricultural sector and, and, and the industrial sectors, what he calls the, the periphery and the core of uh, uh, the world economy. So the core being the, the, the cities where people are, are flocking to and the mm. periphery being so the agricultural areas yeah, outside pre of that. Pre precisely. Yeah. And so what have been the impacts of Professor Krugman's theories? Uh, well, largely, I, I think what, what Krugman does is, is what we call positive theory. He helps us to understand how the world yes. works. So it's not directly policy-oriented. But uh, with, with a better understanding of the world, we can, we, we can also make better calculations of the effects of, of various policies. So one area would be trade negotiations, where, uh, for instance, the World Trade Organization now routinely use models based on Krugman's theories in evaluating the effect of uh, different trade liberalization measures. Yeah. And so this is the, the, these are theories that had a big impact on economic sciences. Uh, ex exactly. So there's, there's a huge amount of work that builds on Krugman's theory and in, in trade perhaps mostly in the 80s and 90s, whereas now perhaps geography is the, the hotter area. Right. In, in, in so in are, do, do Professor Krugman's theories totally explain what we're seeing now in terms of trade or is, it, is, it, is, there, is there a balance between what we call traditional trade theory and, and new trade theory? Uh, that's, that's very definite, definitely a balance. So, so the old 
heterolene theory explains part of trade patterns. The new theory, based on increasing returns to scale, ex ex explains another part, and then perhaps there's a remnant that we, we, we still don't understand. Right. And this is, this is, a, this is a prize that definitely sort of fits into the pattern of uh, understanding globalization, which of course has uh, positive and negative mm -hmm. um, implications, depending on, what, on how you believe in this. And of course, we're, we're um, in this period of uh, economic crisis. So more people are never going to be interested in this prize. I mean, is this a prize that's been selected to reflect the, the, the uh, environment we're in? Well, I mean, it's cer certainly not selected with, with the, the current crisis in mind. I mean, that's not, not the way the prize committee can, yeah. can work. I mean, we have a sort of longer, longer time horizon. So we started thinking of this prize uh, long before we saw the crisis coming. Yeah. Uh, it is, a, it is a price that helps us to understand globalization, yes. but perhaps more globalization on the real side, good, goods, and ser, goods and service flows, whereas the crisis has more to do with financial flows. And although Krogman has done research on in, in th these areas as well, that's not what uh, he was awarded the prize for. And did you talk to Professor Krugman yourself? Did uh, we talked to him uh, on the phone when we when we woke him up this morning. And how did he react? Oh, he was he he, he was really stunned. I mean, he he was, uh, I think more, he was was more surprised than I had expected. Wonderful. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Professor. Thank Edmund. you. For more about this prize, please visit NobelPrize.org. That's about all for this uh, live webcast, and indeed our webcast of all the 2008 Nobel Prize announcements. We hope you've enjoyed these these live webcasts. And please join us again in December when we'll be covering Nobel Week. But for now, goodbye.